Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypernatremia. Now, I've already done a video on hyponatremia. If you haven't watched it yet, that's fine. It doesn't have to go in order, but make sure you watch it so you can understand the differences between hyper and hyponatremia. Before we get started, guys, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and also check out the audio lessons I have available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Okay, guys, so let's get started. Hypernatremia, again, sodium's 135 to 145. Um, some labs, the number may be off. It might say a 136 to 145. It might be off by a number or two. That's okay. Uh, sodium doesn't have as narrow therapeutic range as something like potassium. However, for testing purposes, I guarantee you the number given will be way out of range. So if it's out of range, you're going to know. But sodium, 135 to 145, we're talking about hypernatremia. So it's going to be sodium higher than around 145. So it says hypernatremia. This is an electrolyte imbalance in which the serum sodium level is over 145. Assessment. What's this patient going to look like? Well, let's look at the neurovascular changes. Um, nervous system, neurovascular, nervous system uh, changes start with altered cerebral function. So the, the, the functioning of the brain. Assess the patient's mental status, their cognition, the way that they're thinking. In hypernatremia, if the sodium's too high, but look at this, guys. So if the sodium is too high, but the fluid is normal. In hypernatremia with normal or decreased fluid volumes, the patient can have a short attention span. They might be agitated or confused. But if they have hypernatremia again, but they have fluid overload, so they have too much fluid volume, too much fluid in the vessels, we may see the patient lethargic, drowsy, stuporous, even comatose. That's important. So something that I, you guys should um, notice in the differences with hyper and hyponatremia, it makes a difference if the patient is in fluid volume deficit versus fluid volume excess. So if the patient has hypernatremia, the signs and symptoms are going to be different if they have too much fluid versus if they don't have enough fluid. So it's very important that you guys know the difference. Skeletal muscle changes. All right, skeletal muscle changes, that um, varies with the degree that the sodium increases. So the change, the difference that we see in the skeletal muscle, what really makes a difference is how high that sodium is. So look, if it's only a just a mild rise, patient has hypernatremia, but it's not too, too much, right? Mild rises causes muscle twitching and irregular muscle contractions. Now, just for testing purposes, usually um, if the patient's hypernatremic and they give you a test question, it, this is what you're going to be looking at. It's going to be hypernatremia, but it's not going to be severe, severe, but it's still going to be hypernatremia. So what you're expecting to see is this, the muscle twitching, the muscle contractions, okay? But as the hyper, cal hyper you know, I can't speak. But as the hypernatremia worsens, look at this, the muscles and nerves that are so excited, they're less able to respond to stimulus, and then the mu muscles become weaker. So what we expect to see in hypernatremia, we expect to see increased muscle twitching, increased muscle contraction, but that can only last for so long. So as the hypernatremia gets worse and worse and worse, those muscles get tired and we start to see what? Weakness. Late, late in hypernatremia, the deep tendon reflexes are reduced or even absent because of that weakness. It just can't take it anymore. You're going to observe for twitching in muscle groups because if the patient is hypernatremic, uh, again, you expect to see muscle contraction, muscle itching, uh, a twitching, muscle irritation. So you're going to be observing for twitching in the muscle groups. You're going to assess their hand group, your the hand grip, excuse me. You're going to assess deep tendon reflexes. Let's look at cardiovascular changes. Cardiovascular changes include decreased contractility, but look why, because high sodium levels slow the movement of calcium into the heart cells. So everything that comes with that decreased contractility of the heart, guys, what are you going to do? You're going to measure the blood pressure and rate and quality and the apical and peripheral pulses. What do we expect to see happen? Let's keep going. 
the pulse rate is going to be increased in patients with hypernatremia and hypovolemia. Why do you think that is? Patients hypernatremic, but they have fluid volume deficits. They have a little bit of fluid within that vascular space. So why would the heart rate be increased? Think about it, decrease fluid in the vascular space. So the heart rate is going to increase trying to push out oxygenated blood to perfuse the tissues and organs, okay? Peripheral pulses are gonna be difficult to palpate. Why? Because fluid volume deficit. There's no fluid within the vessel space. Of course, it's gonna be difficult to palpate and they're gonna be easily blocked because of the fluid volume deficit. Hypotension and severe orthostatic hypotension are present and uh, pulse pressure is reduced because of the hypovolemia. Don't try to memorize, guys. Understand, because if you understand, no matter how this question is twisted, you're still going to be able to get the correct answer. Now, in patients that still have hypernatremia, but they have hypervolemia, which means they're in fluid volume overload, they got too much fluid, they have slow to normal bounding pulses. Why is that pulse gonna be bounding? Because of all that fluid within the vascular space. The peripheral pulses are gonna be full because of all that fluid and difficult to block because of all that fluid. Then guys, just think about those signs and symptoms of fluid volume excess. You're gonna see neck veins distended. The blood pressure is going to be what? Increase. Nursing interventions for our hypernatremic patient. So interventions used when the sodium levels become life-threatening include hemodialysis when we need um, to go ahead and get those numbers down immediately, right? The priority for nursing care of the patient with hypernatremia include monitoring his or her response to the therapy. Of course, we need to make sure whatever we're doing for this patient is actually working because if it's not, you're going to have to call the healthcare provider and they're going to have to prescribe something else. So we have to monitor therapy, make sure it's working, and ensure patient safety. How are we going to ensure their safety? By preventing hyponatremia and dehydration. Let's talk about this. Preventing hyponatremia. So that patient has hypernatremia. We're trying to correct it. One of the things that we may do is give them diuretics to get rid of that sodium. Too much diuretics can cause fluid volume deficit. It can throw that patient into dehydration. Something else that we may do is give them fluids, right? Giving them fluids will dilute that uh, sodium that's in the system. Excuse me. Um, we have to watch out for fluid volume um, overload. So depending on the type of treatment that patient's getting for the hypernatremia, you're going to have to make sure that you keep that patient safe and you don't accidentally throw them into hyponatremia by giving them too much fluids or cause them to be dehydrated by all of those diuretics. Let's talk about drug therapy. Drug therapy is used to restore fluid volume when hypernatremia is caused by fluid loss. Remember, patient can lose so much fluid that sodium gets um, concentrated, right? Isotonic saline, your full normal saline and um, your half normal saline, your dextrose 5%, these are the most often prescribed um, uh, fluids given to the patient. Although the dextrose, this is important, look at this guys. Although the dextrose 5% in the half sodium chloride is hypertonic in the bag, look what happens. Once it's infused, the glucose is rapidly metabolized and the fluid is really hypotonic. And that's why those are great fluids to give to that hypernatremic patient. Hypernatremia that's caused by poor kidney excretion of sodium requires drug therapy with diuretics. They can get, you know, something like thirosamide. That's your l l Lasix. L l Lasix, be careful because it makes you l l lose potassium. Okay, they may get something like Bumex, nutritional therapy. We're going to do nutritional therapy to prevent or correct mild hypernatremia, and that involves adequate water intake. For mild hypernatremia, we may, you know, push fluids to get that sodium to go down. Dietary sodium restriction may be needed. They are already hypernatremic. Do you think this patient needs to be adding salt to their food? Absolutely not. 
And I wrote some things down here because I couldn't find it in the book, but you do get questioned about it when it comes to um, hypernatremia. You need to know, um, make sure that you're assessing that patient's skin because while we're trying to correct that hypernatremia, we're giving them fluids, they may start to get edema. So we need to check their skin for edema. Make sure you're changing that patient every two hours. Make sure you're listening to lung sounds every two hours because we won't, don't want to throw them into fluid overload. Fluid's got to go somewhere. It may spill into the lungs and you listen to the lungs and you're hearing crackles. Absolutely not. So make sure you're checking the uh, lung sounds every two hours. Make sure you're doing INOs. Make sure you're looking at the urine and look at the color of the urine. Is the urine um, a deep, deep, dark concentrated color or is it very, very light? And make sure you're doing daily weights. Same scale, same clothes, same time of day on the patient. And so guys, this is basically your hypernatremia in a nutshell. Hypernatremia wasn't as thought hard as you thought, was it? please in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. I promise I'm going to continue this series. I'm going to do all of the fluids and electrolytes. Um, if there's anything you'd like me to cover that I haven't done so already, please also let me know in the comment section. Don't forget I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.